hi this is Paul from finishyoursong.com and over the last few videos I've been looking at gain staging setting up your mix to give you the best levels and setting up your listening environment so that you get the right results that's fine up to the point when the signal leaves your computer and your interface and heads for the speakers after that we're out into the wilds and into the room where you're listening and that's where things can go horribly wrong. Now this is my room and it's far from ideal. What you want to have is a rectangular room with your mix at the short wall firing down the long length of the wall with acoustic treatment to absorb the rogue frequencies that you might get depending on the size of your room. As you can see my room just doesn't meet those criteria. It's a rectangular room all right, but my desk is pushed off to one side in an alcove between the end wall and a chimney breast. And to my right, as I sit and mix, I have a large reflective acoustic panel, otherwise known as a glass window. Behind me, instead of the length of the room, I have a bookcase. This is far from ideal. So what can I do to get round that? How can I compensate for the inadequacies of my room? I've got a decent pair of speakers, they're M-Audio BX5s and they're isolated on Aural X Mopads. So I've done all I can to make sure that what comes out of the speakers is true and unbiased. But the room is what lets me down. One possible answer is this. This is the Advanced Room Correction System from IK Multimedia. Um, before we go any further, I should just add in here, of course, that I didn't pay full price for this. If you've been following my videos for any length of time, you'll know that I, as a general rule, always wait until things are on sale. What this does is it enables you to measure the acoustic shortcomings of your room and compensate for them. Um, it comes as two separate pieces of software, one that does the measurement, one that does the correction. This is the software that does the correction. That sits as a plug-in in your DAW. It also comes with its own calibrated condenser mic. So at the end of the process you end up with a rather nice small diaphragm mic that you can use for your recording. So what do you do? Well, in short, you set the microphone up in a number of positions around the room, trigger the software and that emits a series of what I can only describe as whumps from the speaker. It takes a frequency measurement and because you move the microphone to different locations it actually measures out of the left and out of the right to give you an overall balance of the frequency response of your room around your mixing position. It's a good idea to have the microphone at ear level so what the microphone hears is what your ears hear. What I've got here is one of my tracks that I've mixed and at the moment the correction is off and I just want to give you the quick tour of the software. Um, I'm going to play in a minute the song without the correction and with the correction. Now that's not really going to be very helpful for you because obviously you're not listening to it in my space as it's set up but what it will show you is how it alters the sound and if you're listening on headphones or your own monitors hopefully you will hear a difference and appreciate the difference. So you take your measurements and in this case I've measured the monitors with the curtains drawn and with the curtains open so I've got that flat panel of glass factored in to the measurements I've taken. So I did them twice, once with the curtains drawn, once with the curtains back. What that gives you is for each speaker, for each channel, um, your flat, which is the green line, as you can see, your target, this is what we're aiming for. It gives you your before, so it shows you how my room was acting the goat at these various frequencies. I had a massive hump at around 100 to 200 Hertz. I had a dip on one channel. I wasn't getting a true picture in the mid-range. That was getting uh, sucked out. 
and I had a bit of an artificial presence at the top. The after is the white line and as you can see it's pretty much saying there's not a lot going to be happening at the bottom end and that's a limitation of the speakers and I'm fine with that. My speakers do not have a flat frequency response all the way down to 20 Hz. The 5 inch speakers I'd be amazed if they did. And apart from a few wibbles and wobbles along the way, as a general rule, I'm going to get a flattish response. It's not perfect, but it's good enough. The other thing you can do is alter the target curve, and this alters the output from the arc correction system. So I've got it set for flat at the minute. I want to be able to hear a true representation of what my speakers are trying to tell me. But you can also add in these varying curves should you want to have the mid-range compressed. You can set up your own custom curves and that's very much like the EQ in Cubase or any uh, GUI based uh, EQ. You can grab hold of your points and pull them around. But the interesting one is that you can have virtual monitoring. The ideal is that your speaker setup would give you a true and accurate impression that would then translate perfectly onto any speaker system that you play it back on. But how many of us find that we mix something on one set of speakers and when we play it back on another set of speakers, it doesn't sound right. So you then have to go back to your DAW, set everything back up and make the amendments. What this is trying to do is shortcut that process. You've got 80s white, 90s black, which I th one of them is supposed to be Yamaha NS10s, I think. But it's also got what it would sound like played on a boombox, on a car stereo, through your iPod, multimedia speakers, laptop speakers, etc. It gives you, broadly, a representation of what this would sound like if you played it on one of them. So rather than having to print a mix, take it off and listen to it in your car, in theory, you can bring your car into the studio just by clicking on that and it'll tell you what it sounds like. Whether it's accurate or not to your particular car, it does give you a different set of combinations that you can test on to see how it's going to sound on a range of speakers. We've got three buttons across the bottom here. We've got play, which is this screen. Edit, which is where you set up your um, custom EQs. And monitor. So here we've got where the level is set up for dim. So if you click on this, it would automatically reduce the level by 15 decibels. As a general rule, it's reducing your output level by 6 dB. That's something to watch when you're using this because it does mean when you take the correction out, your output is going to jump by 6 dB. There's a mute. And more usefully, there's a stereo mono mode. Stereo, of course, allows the two channels to go through. Mono allows you to listen to your mix in mono. Now, this isn't something I've touched on in videos in the past, but mixing in mono gives you a really good idea of how your mix would work on the radio, in a car, basically how it will sound on most things when you're a couple of feet away from the speakers. It enables you to see if there's any phase cancellation going between the left and right speakers because of the effects you've put on that you won't hear when you're listening on headphones, but you will notice when you're actually listening to it on physical speakers. So that's the quick tour. We'll go back to the play screen. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to play you a bit of Flames in the Fire, which is a song of mine. Now this was mixed on a different set of speakers than the BX5s, but what I'm going to do is play it and I'm going to turn the correction on and off as we go and then you'll be able to hear the difference.
Okay, so whether it sounds better with or without the correction is going to be a function of what you're listening to this on, whether it's headphones or your own speakers. But I think you can see that there is a change takes place in the tonality of the mix and in the relative balance of the frequencies when I switch the correction on and off. So that's the ARC2 room correction system from IK Multimedia. And I hope that's given you an insight into how it potentially could help you or not. And until next time, you take care of yourselves.